Hello! In this GURPS combat example, we will take a look at something different. Instead of an arena fight, there is going to be an ambush. Also, at last, I am not playing against myself. I have a friend help me out. This time we are going to have a cataphract, a mounted knight clad in heavy mail armor. He is armed with a lance, a bow and a short sword. As far as I know, real cataphracts had their horses wear mail barding, but this horse will be unarmored. However, to be able to use the lance, the cataphract will have his horse equipped with stirrups and a war saddle. His opponent will be a master ninja, a highly dexterous and skilled combatant who dual wields fine quality size and has some shurikens. He also has a short sword as a side weapon. We'll assume that the ninja has been sitting in ambush for quite some time, so he'll benefit from the maximum aim bonus. The ninja throws the shuriken as an all-out attack determined maneuver, targeting the horse's neck. That's a good way to spook the mount. The horse is unaware of the attack, so it cannot dodge. The ninja rolls damage and gets a maximum roll. However, I forgot to check for an archery hit, but that doesn't matter right now. This isn't a major wound, but still is a significant chunk of health, thanks to the increased wounding multiplier. The rider now has to roll against riding, penalized by the shock penalty of the mount to prevent it from spooking. The horse gets spooked, shies and bucks. The cataphract along with his horse are mentally stunned due to being surprised. Both of them roll against IQ. The cataphract has combat reflexes, so he rolls at plus 6, and I assume that his war-trained mount does the same. Both of them snap out, but they still have to do the do-nothing maneuver this turn. Gervis basic set says that a stunned rider must make a roll to remain seated, but I assume that it doesn't apply to being stunned from being surprised. Then the ninja draws another shuriken by rolling fast draw, and then immediately throws it at the horse. Now the horse may dodge, even though it is uh, spooked, but its uh, dodge score is penalized for being mentally stunned. This is something I have seen many do wrong. After you recover from stun, you still take the do nothing maneuver, and hence have a minus 4 to all active defenses. Even though the damage was minimal, this is a critical dodge failure, and that means that the horse falls. There are rules for that on page 397. First, the horse must make a dexterity plus one roll to avoid breaking a leg. I rolled a failure, and so it does break a leg. Now, the cataphract must make a riding roll at minus two. He succeeds and does not get unseated. However, now he has to make another riding roll penalized by encumbrance to leap clear of the fallen mound. The war saddle description in low tech says that it eliminates encumbrance penalties for riding rows, so I will not apply them here. The rider succeeds, but he still falls and takes damage as for a two-yard fall, but at least he doesn't get crushed by the corpse. Let's roll fall damage. HP is doubled because ground is considered a hard object. I rolled a random hit location and got the left leg. The cataphract has DR5 from heavy mail armor, but this armor has minus 2 to DR against crushing damage. Thus, the effective DR is 3, and the cataphract takes 4 points of injury. On his turn, the cataphract takes the change posture maneuver to go from prone to kneeling and drops his lance. It's not a very good weapon in this situation, even though you can use a lance on foot or without a charging mount, according to GURPS low tech page 10. You need to use the spear skill to do it and the cataphract doesn't have it. In addition to that, the lens is so heavy that it cannot parry, and its reach is a static 4 instead of a range from 1 to 4. On the next turn, the ninja draws a sigh with fast draw, then runs behind the kneeling cataphract and swings with his sigh. That's a move and attack maneuver. Despite this being an attack from the back, the cataphract still can dodge, as this counts as a runaround attack, but he fails to do that. The ninja rolls maximum damage. I decided to use the optional rules from Girls Martial Arts to see if this hits the vitals, but it did not. Still, this is 5 HP lost, which puts the cataphract to reeling. The cataphract on his turn stands up, turns around and draws his short sword as a ready maneuver. Then the ninja rolls fast draw to draw a short sword in his left hand. Then he makes a feint with his sigh. 
Since I'm not playing against myself this time and there's no GM, I'll note it down but resolve the feint on the next turn when it actually comes up. This way neither of the players know the result beforehand. The cataphract thrusts with his short sword but misses like a chump. Now let's resolve the feint. As you can see, the cataphract will have a minus 10 penalty to defense rolls. The ninja decides to do a dual weapon attack as an all-out attack determined against the sword hand of the cataphract. The two attacks are resolved separately. Despite the cataphract having a minus 10 penalty to defend due to feint, active defense rolls can be attempted even if the target number is lower than 3. Basically, I'm going to hope for a critical success. But of course, both attacks hit. The damage rolls are quite low, however. The short sword swing deals damage, but it doesn't penetrate twice the gauntlet DR. Thanks to the blunt trauma and edged weapons rule from GURP Slowtech, this transforms the damage type from cutting to crushing. In total, 4 points of injury was dealt to the hand. This does not cripple the hand, but brings the cataphract down to 0 HP. The cataphract rolls against HT alone to stay conscious. Now, the cataphract decides to stab the ninja in the face as a telegraphic all-out attack determined. The ninja cannot defend. First, I checked if the sword hits the ears or skull, because the ears and skull are actually protected by the hood. I rolled 1d, but rolled a 6, so the sword hits the face. The cataphract rolls damage. This is a major wound to the face, so it triggers a knockdown roll at minus 5. The ninja is knocked unconscious since he failed the roll by 5. Then I'll roll to see if the cataphract collapses. I roll against HT11 and he stays conscious. I guess since the ninja is unconscious, but the cataphract is merely on the edge of consciousness, I can declare the cataphract a winner here, even though that only happened due to bad damage rolls for the ninja. Overall, that was a fun fight, even if a short one. I didn't get to try out a lance charge, that's unfortunate. And as you could see, the mounted combat rules are quite involved. You have to do many riding rows with some different penalties and rules, there are many new tables. Honestly, they are quite fun, and I would like to try some more mounted combat in the future. And it was quite fun actually playing against someone instead of playing against myself. But anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.